You guys okay. nervous? Yes. Sir. Are yes, sir. you nervous? Oh, no. Like, we're not at all. <laughs> we're not at all. Your guys' so. overwhelming confidence is making us nervous. Does it really? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not confident. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I guess we'll just start. Okay. Uh, hello and welcome to the Sacraments in the Real World podcast. My name's Serena. I'm Sin. I'm Zoe. And we're your radio show hosts for today. Let's go. <laughs> the topic we will be discussing this week is the Sacrament of Matrimony. Okay. okay. Here are today's guests. Please introduce yourselves. My name is Melissa. And my name is Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Sin? So let's start off with how you guys met. I was um, at UCLA in their school of dance. And I got invited to consider going to college in the Midwest. And I thought I should try it. I was raised in Orange County, lots to do in Orange County. And yet I got to the Midwest and it was, it was a, a great place to stay out of trouble. Too cold in the winter, too hot in the summer. And I met this gal at age 19 with an accent that I'd never heard before. I'd never heard a Southern accent. And I just really noticed her. She was beautiful and she wasn't interested in me at all. And that actually made me really attracted to her. And so we got to know each other as friends. We worked together, we served our college, representing the college in the Midwest, and after about a year and a half or less, I told her, I don't want to hurt you, but I want to marry you. And I was like, what? I, and she was like, what? And we, I proposed to her in December at age 19, we got married, no, age 20, and then we got married in May, and we just celebrated 33 years. Life is good. We enjoy marriage better than ever now. Okay, that's so sweet. How did you guys know that you were the one for each other? Well, when I was in high school, my rule uh, was that I wouldn't date anybody that I wouldn't marry because you don't know who you're going to fall in love with and then you might end up making a decision I just noticed that he had the most important thing, which was this really personal relationship to Jesus. And I was like, wow, that's, I've just never seen this before. And I was raised in a Christian home, in a very devoted Christian home, that where we practice always doing the right thing, but we didn't always have this like personal relationship with the Lord. Like it was just different. And I knew that he had the most important thing and all the other stuff that wasn't really on my list. Like his family was completely different from my family. Um, he was just completely different <laughs> in every way. Like I'm from a really man's man world and he was in dance and owned leotards. And I was like, oh, this might not go over well. But he had what was the most important thing, which was a relationship with Jesus and a very good character. And so I knew I wasn't going to find anybody with better character. And that's how I knew. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, what are some of the difficulties and the joys of marriage life? Well, I think one of the major difficulties you always have in marriage is putting the other person first. Um, but that's the secret to your marriage being happy. You know, the thing that makes you the happiest is also sometimes the hardest thing, is that it really is super important for me to put his needs above my own and for him to put his need, my needs above his. You know, and so then someone has you first, but it's not you. Do you have anything else to add? <clears throat> I don't know if it's this is the variable that makes putting one another first challenging, but you've heard the kind of colloquialism uh, or kind of axiom that opposites attract. Opposites attract and they 
uh, they kind of contract too. I mean, it's it's a good um, conflict because they say statistically that couples that are exactly the same actually have a hard time. They get bored of each other. But this this dramatic difference that we have in one another as we put one another first um, has a lot of surprises in it. Like, well, it makes you grow. Yeah. You have to grow. So we come from opposite ends. Like he's very much an introvert. He doesn't seem like it when you meet him, but he could stay home all night, every night, Six forever. Week, no problem. I could be out every night, every night and, and have week, fun. No and so the conflict, that has always been a huge conflict mm-hmm. in our marriage is I want to be out with people. He wants to be home. So we've tried to still honor each other and it helps us both come to the middle. It helps me see the weakness in me needing to be out every night. She's out every night and has a hard time getting all her work done. I'm wanting to stay home every night and I don't get to be out enjoying community and friends. And so we've both grown in that area together. Um, what have you learned in your time together? Well, we've learned that you're always learning. That marriage, if you put the hard work in every day, it really does get easier and more enjoyable. I would say the number one thing I've learned from Melissa. Melissa's super smart, super um, logical in in decision-making and in managing her emotions. Uh, She's very English in that regard. She does not wear her emotions on her sleeve. She's actually hard to get to know. I'm the opposite. But what I've learned from her is we don't uh, spend a a lot of time overthinking things, second guessing, wondering what someone else is thinking, someone else is upset or bothered. We'll like note, could be an issue, but she's taught me not to uh, perseverate over it, not to sit there and over and mull it over. We don't do that. Conversation, we have it, done, move on. That's what she's taught me. It's been a gift. And then what is something you admire about your spouse? She's a tenacious worker and thinker. Her idea of relaxing is repairing the refrigerator, (laughs) changing out the hard drive, paying our bills. My idea of relaxing, Netflix. (laughs) She's super Um, hardworking and smart. I would say what I admire the most about him is he doesn't mind having a difficult conversation. Um, which I avoid conflict at all cost, and he doesn't mind just moving in and, and working through it and getting over it, saying difficult things, and I'm trying to learn that. I also really admire still his personal devotion to the Lord is pretty incredible. He puts that first every morning, and I don't always, and he does. You ladies are studying the sacraments. Mm-hmm. They have their origin in the Hebrew Bible, Genesis through Malachi and in Matthew through Revelation outside of some of the apocryphal writings. But I absolutely love those two books. I just am completely um, in love with them. That's very sweet. Has faith ever or does it continue to play an important role in your marriage? Well, I think it's number one for getting along and knowing how to honor each other. Um, And that's one of the reasons he loves the Old Testament and the New Testament is that they really do give guidance and wisdom. They're not just out of date, not necessary anymore. And when we first got married and we would have a conflict, which we had all the time, it kind of felt like all we did was argue the first two years. we were just a few years older than you. Oh my gosh. 20. <laughs> we were how, 20. how old are you ladies? 16. I'm 16. So four. Okay. Yeah. Three to four years older than you. Married. And so whenever we would have a conflict, um, that's kind of how we would resolve it is we wouldn't say, what do I want or what do you want? We would say, what does the scripture say about this? And it says a wife should honor her husband and a her, and a, um, and a husband should honor his wife and you it, it, it's just that's how we solve conflict with not choosing our will, but choosing 
scripture. And the Genesis account that describes a man leaving his mother and father and cleaving to his wife. That's the language in Genesis 2, 24. The idea of cleaving is more than just sex. It's becoming a new unit that when you become a new unit, you take on mutually a totally different nature. You change together. And the purpose of that new unit becoming one flesh is twofold. It's to for your own protection and your own enjoyment, but it's also so that together we can serve the Lord and obey him together. We become a unit. So faith is everything. It's kind of like if you view it as a triangle, Melissa and I are both on the ends, the uh, we'll say the hypotenuse of the right triangle. As we grow closer to God through Christ, we grow closer together. The higher you get in your relationship with God, the closer you are together. So faith is everything. Yes. Um, and lastly, what advice would you give to the girls of our class about important and meaningful relationships mm. and marriage itself? Oh, that's good. <laughs> can I give this advice? If I can follow. Maybe you would want to follow. Well, I think my advice that I lived by when I was your age is super important. Is that when that dating is for finding the right spouse. And I think sometimes people think dating is just for having fun and sowing wild oats and all that. And you don't, and you really want to be choosing the, the person that you're dating because you're spending emotional energy and, and your heart. Uh, my, my favorite verse when I was growing up was above all else, guard your heart for it's the wellspring of life. Everything in your life comes from your heart and you need to protect it. And you do that by being very careful who you let get close to you and choosing the person, the people that you're letting get close to you are people of high character that you could say um, rationally, this person would make a good husband. This person would make a good father because that's really what you're deciding is that person that you're going to marry which is why you should be dating. I know that feels a lot in high school, but it's really true um, that you're rationally looking at that person and saying, is this someone who I would say, I would like that person to parent with that person. They would make a great dad. Or is it so, and, and, and the thing you need to be using to attract a husband it's not physical beauty, because that's another thing Scripture says is charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised, because that's what lasts a long time. Your beauty, you know, 25, you're kind of on the downslope. And if what you, it's sad to say, it's true. <laughs> and if, you got you, eight oh, more sorry. Years. <laughs> no. You have longer than that. But if, but if you used physical attractiveness is the number one way you're getting someone, then you're picking, then you're going to get somebody that that was their number one value was someone that's beautiful. When a girl brings so much more to a marriage, okay. you bring your brain and you bring your decision-making skills and you bring your humor and you bring whatever talents God's given you that kind of physical attractiveness is like the side note. It's like the icing on the cake. It's not the cake. So that's my advice. And mine is threefold with just a little piece. So uh, a woman wants three things. She wants to be fought for. She wants her beauty unveiled. And she wants... An to, adventure. To go on an adventure. She don't want a boring couch potato. <laughs> so... How do you know you got someone like that? How do you know? Well, you got to listen to people close to you. you you're not going to want to, but you want to you listen to your mom and dad. You want to listen to your, your close confidants, girls and guys that are really close to you. What do you think? That if, who have the same values that you do. Exactly. Don't just, just listen to anybody. Right, same values. And then lastly, I think that that courtship time is a time for getting to know each other and building a friendship. It is not a time, as our culture would say, for you know, seeing if this works and starting to be uh, sexually intimate, 
without having been married. It's not a time for that, and here's why. It's because when couples start getting involved um, sexually before marriage, what happens is that they, um, they, have a, they get, you know, God designed it so that you get emotionally and mentally and psychologically connected, glued together. It's really hard to separate from that. It's hard to separate your emotions from that. Um, people that do that end up living together longer before they're ever married. They end up having more dysfunction. It's not a healthy start. And so how do you know you've got someone that'll fight for you? How do you know you've got someone that will take you on an adventure? How do you got, know you've got someone that will unveil your beauty? I think if you have someone that who will enjoy just maybe an occasional kiss with you up until your wedding day, that's someone, someone who can exercise self-restraint and patience and uh, kind of persevere through the courtship until your wedding day, that's someone that beginning with your wedding day, you can trust for a long time. Because if, if he doesn't or she doesn't show trustworthiness before you're married, once you get married, he or she's still going to have a difficult time being trustworthy. That's why we read about all these Jerry Springer stories. All of your responses were very meaningful and amazing. Thank you to both for allowing us to interview you. It was an amazing experience for all of us. Thank you so much. Pleasure, really. Pleasure. Thank you. Ding? Done? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Awesome. Yeah. Today we learned about the woe of marriage, the good, the bad, and everything in between. What did you learn from today's podcast, Zoe? I learned that dating is not just something that we do to do it. It's something that should be sacred to us in our hearts because when you date just to date, you'll face a lot of heartbreak and your heart is the most important thing to you. Physically, you don't need looks to survive. You need your heart. You need stability within your heart. So you should be dating to find someone who you want to spend the rest of your life with. And you should understand that emotional connection and mental connection is more important than physical. Because physically, anyone can attract. Anyone can connect with anyone. But not everybody is emotionally or mentally right for each other. Not everyone is in the same wheelhouse as others. So it's important to understand each other, not just on a physical level, but on a emotional and mental level. Wow, that was very yeah. well put. I completely <laughs> agree with you. I learned that when finding a partner, you have to look at more than just the physical aspect and you have to focus on really how you guys work together and how you guys can problem solve as a couple. And I also thought it was really interesting how you learn throughout your marriage and how you have to constantly adjust and adapt to each other. And it's not just like one set thing. You guys are always working together, finding new things, learning new things about each other and learning new things about marriage. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, and also thinking about like your future instead of like being in the present, just thinking about how you want to have fun isn't necessarily the best mindset rather than thinking about your future and knowing what's going to impact you, um, you guys both in the future and knowing whether that person is going to be a good partner to you for the rest of your guys' life and potential marriage as well. Um, so thinking just about the present and how you want to have fun and not necessarily using your um, mind and all of that to think about the future can sometimes have harmful effects. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, something that's really important to note about the sacrament of matrimony itself is that it's not just about the ceremony of marriage. It's not just about the dress and the cake and the guest and the ceremony itself, but it's about God because he's at the center of every marriage. He's at the center of every, you know wedding he's at the center of everything that is a relationship you're brought together through him he brings us to people who are meant for each other he doesn't bring people who don't attract to each other together we bring ourselves to those people which is why it's important to think who are you bringing yourself to are you bringing yourself to someone that god wants you to be with or are you bringing yourself to someone who isn't mentally right for you and isn't emotionally right god won't 
stray you to the wrong path. So you just have to follow his path and follow where he takes you because he will never steer you wrong. I completely agree. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to our sponsors for today's podcast, David's Bridal. Today's recording would not have been possible without the generosity of their team. And thank you to our wonderful audience for tuning into our podcast. And remember to stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully we'll see you at the altar. Tune in next week.